The Tired But Wired Paradox There is a specific, frustrating feeling that only endurance athletes truly understand. I want you to picture the scene. You finished a hard interval session or a tempo run at 7 p.m. Your legs are destroyed, your body is physically shattered. You are technically exhausted. You get into bed at 11 p.m. expecting to pass out instantly, but you don't. Your eyes are closed, but your heart is thumping against the mattress. Your legs feel hot, restless, and twitchy. Your mind is racing at 100 miles per hour, replaying the run, planning tomorrow, worrying about nothing. You are physically exhausted but mentally wide awake. We call this state tired but wired. And it is dangerous. It is the number one sign that your training is not making you stronger. It is breaking your nervous system. Most runners think insomnia is a bad habit caused by looking at their phones or drinking too much coffee. Wrong! For athletes, this specific type of insomnia is a biological chemical imbalance caused by the run itself. You didn't do anything wrong in bed. You did something to your hormones on the track. Today, we are not going to talk about lavender pillows, warm milk, or generic sleep hygiene. We are going to talk about cortisol mechanics and autonomic dysfunction. I will explain why your run might be keeping you awake, and I will give you the specific neural cooldown protocol, a manual override to force your brain to shut down so you can actually recover. The science. You are stuck in fight or flight. Why does this happen? Why can't you sleep when you are so tired? To understand this, you have to look at the two operating systems of your body. One the sympathetic nervous system. Think of this as the gas pedal. It governs high alert, adrenaline, focus, and survival. Two, the parasympathetic nervous system. Think of this as the brake pedal. It governs rest, digestion, and sleep. When you run hard, you slam on the gas. You flood your body with cortisol and adrenaline. This is necessary. You need that chemistry to perform. But here's the problem that most runners ignore. Chemistry takes time to clear. Think of a car engine. If you drive a car at 200 kilometers per hour for an hour and then you park it in the garage and turn off the key, is the engine cold? No. It is ticking. It is radiating heat. The fan is still spinning. You are that car. Adrenaline clears from the blood in minutes. Cortisol takes hours. If you run hard in the evening, or if your life stress is high, your gas pedal gets stuck. You get into bed, but your biology thinks you are still running the marathon. Your core temperature is too high. Your heart rate variability, HRV, is crashed. You cannot sleep because your body thinks it is unsafe to close your eyes. It is stuck in survival mode. The sleep architecture of an athlete, the consequence. Why is this wired state a disaster for your performance? Because of human growth hormone, HGH. We have said it before, HGH is your internal repair crew. It is the hormone that fixes micro tears in tendons, builds muscle, and burns fat. But here is the biological rule you must memorize HG. H and cortisol are enemies. They are antagonistic hormones. They cannot exist in the room at the same time. If your cortisol is still elevated when you fall asleep because you are wired, it blocks the release of HGH during the first critical hours of deep sleep. So you might lose consciousness. You might sleep for eight hours, but you wake up with heavy legs, stiffness, and inflammation. Why? Because you got the rest, but you didn't get the repair. You are running on a treadmill of destruction. This is why you feel like you are aging faster than your non-runner friends. You are breaking down, but never building back up. The interactive test, the pulse drop audit. So how do you know if you are just not sleepy or if you are biologically wired? You don't need a blood test. You have a heart rate monitor. I want you to do this test tonight. The protocol one, lie down in bed, turn off the lights, relax for two minutes. Two, look at your watch. What is your live heart rate? 
3. Compare it to your average resting heart rate. RHR. The verdict. Healthy state. Your bedtime HR should be very close to your RHR, e.g. at within 5 to 8 beats. This means the parasympathetic system is engaging. Wired state. Is your bedtime HR 10, 15, or 20 beats higher than your resting baseline? Are you usually at 50, but tonight you are thumping at 68? This is the red flag. Your sympathetic nervous system is screaming. You are not ready to sleep. You are physiologically still running. If you try to force sleep now, you will toss and turn for hours. You need to intervene. The solution, the neural cool down. So, how do we unstick the gas pedal? We need a neural cool down. Most runners cool down their legs, stretching. Almost nobody cools down their brain. We need to manually trigger the vagus nerve to release acetylcholine, the break neurotransmitter. Step 1. The physiological sigh, the mechanical break. This is the fastest way to dump cortisol in real time. It is backed by neurobiology labs at Stanford. How to do it. 1. Double inhale through the nose. Take a big breath to fill the lungs, then a tiny, sharp second inhale on top to pop open the alveoli. 2. Long, slow. Exhale through the mouth. Imagine you are blowing through a thin straw. The exhale must be twice as long as the inhale. The dosage. Do this 10 times sitting on the edge of your bed before you lie down. This specific pressure change signals the heart to slow down immediately. It is a biological off switch. Step two, thermal dumping, the cold room and socks. Your body cannot enter deep sleep until your core temperature drops by one degree Celsius, two to three degrees Fahrenheit. If you ran today, your metabolism is running hot. The hack, keep your bedroom freezing, 18 degrees Celsius, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The counterintuitive trick, wear socks. This sounds weird, but warm feet cause vasodilation, widening of veins. This pulls heat out of the core and releases it through the skin. Warm feet plus cold lungs equals maximum temperature drop. This signals the brain that it is safe to sleep. Step three, the cortisol shield. Supplement strategy. If you are training hard, you might need chemical support to lower cortisol. Ashwagandha, KSM66. Studies show it lowers cortisol by up to 30%. Take it with dinner. Magnesium bisglycinate, 400 milligrams. It doesn't just help you sleep, it physically relaxes the muscle tension that keeps the nervous system alert. Phosphatidylserine. This is the secret weapon of elite ultra runners. It is a phospholipid that blunts the cortisol response to exercise. If you are truly wired, this is your emergency break. The 41010 rule for caffeine users. Finally, we have to talk about the fuel. You love coffee. I love coffee. But if you are a slow metabolizer of caffeine, which is genetic, that 2 p.m. coffee is the reason you are wired at 11 p.m. Adenosine, the sleep molecule, cannot attach to your brain receptors if caffeine is blocking the parking spot. The new rule, 4, 10, 10. 4 p.m. The absolute cutoff for caffeine. No exceptions. 10 a.m. The start time for caffeine. Why? Wait 90 minutes after waking up to let your natural cortisol clear out first. If you drink coffee the moment you wake up, you increase your tolerance and crash harder later. 10 minutes. Get 10 minutes of sunlight in your eyes immediately upon waking. This sets the timer for melatonin release 14 hours later. Beyond the basics, the membership. We have talked about the nervous system today, but recovery is a massive puzzle. What about nutrition for sleep? Should you eat carbs or fats at dinner to boost serotonin? What about tracking HRV trends to predict illness before it happens? 
In the exclusive membership channel, we analyze real-world data from runners and build advanced recovery protocols that go deeper than the basics. If you want to master the science of recovery, the link is in the description. Respect the off switch. I want you to stop seeing sleep as passive. Sleep is an active performance state. If you can't switch off, you can't recover. And if you can't recover, you can't improve. The feeling of tired but wired is not a badge of honor. It is a warning light on your dashboard. Listen to it. Use the physiological sigh. Cool down your room. Take the magnesium. Force your body to feel safe so it can build the machine you want. My contact details for personalized coaching are in the pinned comment. If you are training hard but feeling burned out, let's fix your schedule before you break. See you in the next video. Sleep strong. Your running journey powered by science.